the Move It vulnerability, which was just recently released, has been kind of blowing up the headlines recently. And this is uh, this is kind of interesting from uh, our standpoint because we are really looking at this as a, uh, a a big problem for a lot of organizations. One, Move It is a secure file system. It is built for sending large volumes of very sensitive data between uh, organizations who well want to keep that uh, that data very uh, you know private. Uh, and uh, unfortunately for them, there happened uh, to be an incident uh, starting on May 27th, where a lot of information from an unknown number of companies at this point was potentially uh, exposed to the public internet. So happy Memorial Day, everyone. Uh, on on May 27th, which was the beginning of Memorial Day weekend, our good old friends at uh, TA505 or Threat Actor 505, otherwise known as the CLOP ransomware group, uh, went ahead and started exploiting servers all around the world. All of these MoveIt servers that were publicly exposed to the internet and the software as a service version of MoveIt, which was hosted through the MoveIt cloud system. So both were vulnerable at this point. Uh, what they were actually doing was exploiting a SQL injection vulnerability and they were deploying web shells onto these exposed servers, which then gave them pretty much unfettered, unlimited access to everything that was available inside the server. This is all the sensitive information that uh, organizations like hospitals, financial institutions, legal institutions, and many others were sending back and forth. Uh, now, CLOP has come out and told victims they now have until June 14th to basically contact them to determine whether or not they have been hacked and they are going to be extorted by the CLOP ransomware group. So that gives you an indication as to, uh, you know, kind of what happened here and how the uh, how big the scope of this was. CLOP might not even know how many people they just hacked at this point, which is kind of remarkable. Now, the timing here is not unusual. Usual, as we've talked about multiple times before, attackers are very fond of attacking over the weekend or during after hours. And holiday weekends are a big target for a lot of reasons. A lot of uh, your trained or tenured IT staff is probably leaving for a vacation. This is like Christmas or Memorial Day or the 4th of July, as we saw with the Kasey attacks, which we'll get into a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, and but Matt, again, it was clear yeah. that CLOP was planning this. Like they had been sitting on this vulnerability for quite some time preparing to release this, correct? Correct. Uh, according to Kroll's research, they've been sitting on a beta version of this vulnerability since April of 2022. So over a year wow. at this point. Yeah. So it, it took so a while to get they deliberately sat on it and actually launched a couple other uh, attacks in the interim before they decided it was the right time to do this one. So um, I'm starting to get afraid of holiday weekends. I'm really glad they left us alone <laughs> on Mother's Day, but I'm a little afraid for the 4th of July, I'll be honest. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we've uh, we've definitely seen indications that this is uh, this is going to be a problem uh, moving forward in the future. Uh, so when we're when we're talking about CLOP, uh, we actually uh, took a spin over to CLOP's dark web breach site just to see what they had to say on the subject. And their comments here were, uh, were were pretty telling in terms of their overall kind of feelings towards this hack and the extent to which organizations were taken down. Uh, now, what they first wanted to let uh, people know was that anyone who uses the Move It product. Uh, basically is at risk here. Uh, Klopp is letting you know that they downloaded a lot of your data as part of an exceptional exploit. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> if you didn't notice, Klopp is one of the only uh, organizations to offer what they refer to as penetration testing after the fact, which we, uh, we thought was kind of a, an interesting way to describe being hacked. Uh, next up, they actually asked people to reach out to them. Uh, so instead of their their normal uh, kind of mo of reaching out to uh, to victims to state that they've been uh, they've been uh, compromised and that their data has been stolen, Klopp is asking you to self-report. If you're using a MoveIt system, they're basically saying like you should probably get in contact with us. We'll verify whether or not we have your data, and then we can start talking about ransom. Call today before your name is published here. Uh, so again, they are they're really putting that uh, that emphasis on people. And today, the 14th is actually their their kind of drop dead date for notifications. Uh, we anticipate starting to see company names listed on their website after today. So we'll be we'll be keeping an eye out and we'll uh, we'll keep you updated. Now we we wanted to get a, a good idea of uh, kind of how many servers may have been impacted by this. So I ran a quick search on Shodan looking for some of the telltale indicators that a MoveIt server was running on someone's network. Uh, inside the United States specifically, we found over 1,800 available MoveIt servers, and this was uh, about a week or so ago that we actually ran this scan. Uh, and again, it, it shows you kind of where a lot of the uh, where a lot of the high-profile victims of this uh, may end up being. Uh, if you look at it too, the United Kingdom also had a significant impact from this with 127 listed servers. Now, now, as I mentioned before, these are just the on-premise uh, MoveIt servers. The uh, software as a service cloud versions were also impacted. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly how many of these were, uh, were potentially impacted. Matt, I know this is often where you swoop in. Love the picture, by the way. Tell us uh, what you do in that very early phase. 
Of course. Well, as our friend Billy Mays here on the screen says, act now, don't delay. This is one of the very uh, most, er, <laughs> one of the most important things that you can do in an incident response scenario is to contain the damage quickly. We don't want this to metastasize. We don't want it to spread to the rest of the network. And we want to minimize our, our, forgive the term here, but we want to minimize our blast radius and make sure that we are focusing on the correct things. Uh, government advisories can really help other, uh, other advisories on standard tactics, techniques, and procedures, which you can get through those uh, threat intelligence sources that we talked about earlier, can be really helpful in identifying identifying exactly where someone may have gone. Uh, in the case of Move It, they uh, basically gave you the nuclear option as to how to stop yourself from becoming a further victim of this attack, and it was to restrict uh, ports 443 and port 80 to the public internet. Basically, what that means is turn off your Move It system, and we saw this with Kaseya's RMM, which again, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later, but their advice was similar to that. Take it offline. Make sure it is not accessible, and you will not, uh, you will not suffer any further consequences, ideally, because of that. Uh, and sometimes that is the best option. Standard options are basically to just remove whatever uh, vulnerable device it is from circulation and kind of go on from there. Now, there are some impacts that we do need to keep in mind here. Uh, if we're taking a proprietary system or a critical system offline, we are going to have operational problems. It's just something that's going to happen. So there may be operational impacts. Your email system might stop working. Your file transfer may stop working. There could also be a new influx of help desk calls coming into your IT staff because people can't access their uh, their normal uh, you know work environments. Uh, and then we can also have social engineering attacks based on how we're responding to these things, especially in the chaos of initial uh, incident response, which will We'll, we'll give you an example of that here in uh, just a minute. But yeah, there's a, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things to keep in mind, especially that very bottom bullet, evidence might be destroyed. To be able to effectively investigate a, uh, a cyber attack, we need evidence to be able to compare with uh, what your normal operating systems look like. If you destroy everything during your initial kind of uh, uh, containment efforts, then we end up with a much, uh, much steeper hill to climb to actually tell you what might have happened. In the case of MoveIt, Zealous, which is the leading payroll supplier in the UK and Ireland, was included in the MoveIt vulnerability. And as a result, the BBC has announced a data breach, British Airways, um, Boots, which is a major British retailer, have all confirmed uh, that they have had an incident resulting from this as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Research for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, or follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.